Hey everybody and welcome back to another Mesidia Post video. I'm joined today by Travis Pfeiffer. Hey, what's going on? Opus 11, baby. Woo! Yeah, so we had all the cards spoiled this morning and we are going to get busy making a bunch of videos to talk about all the different uh, cards in each element and kind of give you guys set reviews as many as possible, as fast as possible. Is that right? Darn right. Here we go. Yes. That's the goal. So we're going to start off with uh, fire and uh, make our way through there. Uh, so the first card is Ifrit, uh, which is a 1 CP summon, which will be a theme in this set. And he has an EX burst, choose 1 4, deal at 5,000 damage. If your opponent has received 5 points of damage or more, deal at 8,000 damage instead. Now this is... Um, kind of a theme in this set that there's a bunch of stuff that's live once your opponent's taken damage and normally it's those we've had a lot of stuff that's when your own when you yourself has, has taken damage so this kind of rewards aggressive players or it, it rewards uh, players uh, against all this self damage stuff that people are doing to get their abilities live so if someone's uh, Fusilling themselves, they're playing Dataluma, they're playing the new Stab, and they're playing the new Warrior of Light, whatever it is, and they're taking a bunch of damage to get their uh, effects online. Well, this is going to be a nice counter to that uh, at 1 CP. And with things like K-Tuna, then it's going to be even more powerful. So uh, the only question left is how consistent is that going to be to for your opponent to be on 5 damage? Uh, but if it's not that bad, then, you know, 5k on an EX burst isn't bad for Mono Fire anyway. Absolutely. This will fit right in with the uh, Ifrit control deck with the Ifrita. And uh, I'm, I'm probably a little biased because 10 is my personal favorite Final Fantasy. So the fact that they used the 10 version of Ifrit, which has always been one of my favorite designs of him. Uh, so I, I just love the artwork. It's just so cool to see him finally. And other than that, I mean, you pretty much said it like 1 CP, 5k damage, EX burst. Can't really go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It seems, seems like a, a fine card. All right. How about the next one? All right, next one's caused a lot of hubbub. Uh, mm -hmm. This is from Final Fantasy VI Interceptor. Two cost, fire backup, uh, job dog. That'll be important, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, the card named Shadow you control gains 1,000 power in haste. And then for one of any color and tap, choose one category, six board you control, it gains haste until the end of the turn. This card is fantastic. Uh it, it, it says card name shadow, so technically if you play the backup shadow, that would gain haste as well if for some reason you needed to instantly, you know, crack it to, to nuke someone for 8k with its effect. And it'll obviously help any of the forward shadows, including the new shadow that we'll talk about a little later. And just the fact that this gives any category 6 character haste, like, whoo, I mean, Fire Ice 6 was already such a beast of a deck anyway, and this has just pumped it up even more. I don't know if you run this in place of the Sage. Maybe you run both. Maybe you have both. So you've got one you can pump and then another one you can play it down and do it. But yeah, it's just, he reads so well. The only real complaint I have is the artwork's a little weird because if that's supposed to be Shadow writing him, Shadow looks very strange in this photo. And yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of the artwork, even though I normally go nuts over the Amano stuff, but yeah. great card. Uh, it's all like concept, right? So like nothing about yeah. the game was made when this drawing was done so like <laughs> like there's always just these wacky things or like wrong hair colors or, or things that yeah. they just like obviously got uh tuned up quite a bit before they actually made it into any game uh the my only thing i want to add on to what you said is i just can't believe that the uh the payment for this haste is a generic cp and not a fire yeah. cp that is crazy to me because then you can put it in uh, Fire Ice and you can have your Edgar back up to boost up your guys and yeah. you can have Interceptor out. And uh, like like that would have been the way to get the Fire CP, but now it doesn't even matter. Like this could be your Dude. only Fire backup and you're going to be giving everything haste. You're going to give Locke haste, which is huge. The new Data Luma is going to have uh, haste and he's going to have Brave pretty quickly too. So I just think that it's, it's pretty aggressively uh, yeah. costed and made. Like it... Like I wonder if this would have seen play it. Well, I probably wouldn't three, but but you know, like it's just it just seems like they I, I gave it. it I, bet it, I bet it could have been a, in a in a six deck in a six yeah. deck specifically to get to have a colorless red mage. Like I think that's a huge right. a huge boost. So yeah, oh well. So I guess uh, six is definitely coming back, uh, and the only question is how yeah, it will fare with uh, the other uh, meta decks. Okay. Uh, Speaking so, of six. 
Yeah, so we've got uh, Cyan, and he's not necessarily going to be in a six deck. Uh, he might be in Mono Fire. So this is a three CP uh, EX Burst Fire Forward Job Samurai, six thousand power. When Cyan enters the field, you may search for a Job Samurai or card name Samurai other than Cyan and add it to your hand. When a job or a card named Samurai you control attacks, deal 1,000 damage for each job Samurai or card named Samurai you control to all of the forwards your opponent controls. So this is going to fit really well in decks that already run Gosetsu and Hien, uh, and we have lots of standard unit Samurais as well, including backup Samurais. Uh, so if you have a couple of backup Samurais already, then Cyan can pretty easily swing for a 3k on on attack, uh, which means he's like at the very least he's swinging for 7k, so he's on curve in that way, right, by himself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you have these backups, you have other forwards, then he becomes this board clearer because you have access to Efrida and you have access to things like Chaos Mobius. Uh, I think that this is a really, really neat bit of support, and I also love the artwork. Yeah, he's great. Um, I'll disagree with you on the artwork. Like, it is fine for that style. I'm just not a fan of that kind of like cartoony style from DFF, mm. um, from Dissidia, I believe that is. Uh, but yeah, his effects are great. Like, 3 CP, he's going to get you a card back, so he's that soft one cost. On an EX burst, so if he hits into damage, great for you. He's going right into my Heian deck. Like, Heian has the effect that when he attacks, he buffs everyone by 1,000, or when any job Samurai attacks. And so Cyan, not only that, now you're doing a mass board damage and stuff like that is always superior to something that like chooses because that way it gets around a lot of stuff stuff that would normally be immune is going to take that hit in particular what i really like about this card is that it's both job and card name samurai because there is a samurai that i think is a standard unit and so it technically doesn't get the he and buff when it swings because oh mm. it's not a job samurai so i really appreciate that cyan here covers both of them and um, that's that's super important yeah. for the samurai backup, the two CP backup. Yeah, like that's gonna now uh, be pretty essential to have that and go sets you out when you have Cyan out. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely jamming this into my mono fire with Hien, and I can't wait to try it. Yeah, the one thing that's always tricky with archetype uh, decks and not category decks typically is that there's so much stuff you have to keep on board and intact yeah. for your plans not to be ruined. So let's hope that that's something that Monofire Samurais can do. Um, Here's open. Okay, so the next one is a huge deal because it brought a rule change to the game and will forever uh, take fire out of a certain card's shadow. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> How do I talk about this card? Because I have a lot of thoughts on it. Okay, so this is Kuch Aspel. 2 CP, backup, job mass man, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. He has a tap ability. Uh, all you do is you just tap. The damage dealt to forwards opponent control, the damage dealt to forwards opponent controls cannot be reduced this turn. Now they had to release a big ruling about this because there are some cards like Minwu and Ishtola that say these cards don't receive damage, period. And so this basically completely negates that because they changed it that now, well, actually, no, they do receive damage. It's just now reduced to zero. So this changes this. So this card alone completely counters Minwu, Ishtola, uh, Forward Legend Aerith, like anything that has reduction. It's even good against things like Seahard, things that just does board reduction. And like, so I'm not sure how to feel about it because I don't like the errata of the ruling. I think that's really silly to have a rule in place for 10 opuses and then suddenly be like, uh, oh yeah, it doesn't work that way anymore. Because really, the thing I always heard fire people complain about was Ishtola. Oh, Ish it's like, okay, well then do something about that card. Don't make a card that like... Because Ishtola is not the one I'm worried about. What bugs me about this card is Kane, the, the Opus 10 Dragoon Kane. He's not supposed to take any damage but battle damage, but now he can because of this. Um... Other yes, uh, Legend Cecil, the forward five cost paladin that makes it so no one can receive summon or. But he's not. That's his point of that card, and this card shuts that off too. So, it feels like a way to answer a very specific card as opposed to just and it's hurting everything else in the process. Now, all that being said, here's the thing too, similar to Minwu or a card like it. If your opponent has nothing that reduces damage, this is basically a dead card. It's just sitting on your board, and it'll never do anything, because if they don't have any effect like that, then what's the point of this? So in that sense, I could see the argument that, like, well, if they don't even run anything like that, this is just wasted space. So that's true, too. But Alex, what do you think? Well, uh, first of all, the taking a swing at, at my favorite card, Cecil, uh, 
that's tough. You know, he has a hard enough time as it is being played, and then now this yeah, comes out. I mean, Hobby Japan. Uh, this is kind of like a reverse to CP Yuna in water, in that it makes all of your fire summons cost one more. Hmm, that's interesting. Right? Right, because every time you're going to use this to, if you're going to use this, you're paying a CP for it. So let's say you want to cast a Brynhildr on um, an Ishtola, Ishtola, you just spent four CP on that Brynhildr. That's so a good your, point. Your fire summons now cost one more, which is kind of crazy if you think about it that way. I'm really spinning it in a negative way, but obviously it's a very important card because it's going to make Mono Fire playable against things like. Uh, Minwu and Yishtola. So it, it it is very, very important. Um, it's also worth mentioning that uh, now that things like Minwu have this rule change, but when their damage is uh, reduced, it is now a replacement effect, and that will actually be a really big boost to Minwu. And that's a whole other thing, but you can look online or comment down in the yeah. uh, comments here if you have want to some questions about that then i'm happy to answer them but basically minwu just got a lot better except for against uh ku caspel yeah yeah look up minwu and Ktuna interaction they specifically mentioned that in the fact that's a great example of it so yeah exactly okay uh perfect so the next card is a black mage soldier it's a 4 cp 7k um <laughs> And when Black Mage enters the field, choose one for your opponent controls. If the cost to play Black Mage Soldier was paid with CP of two or more different elements, then deal it 5,000 damage. And uh, this is kind of a, it's a standard unit, and there's going to be a standard unit in every single element that has a, uh, if you used CP of two or more different elements. These cards are necessary for limited. Um... This is the one that might actually see play because it's Final Fantasy IX, and that might help people do their VV shenanigans. But even then, it's not that good. I, I even think this could have been safe at seven or at eight K power, and they wouldn't have been pushing too many envelopes, to be honest with you. But uh, it is at seven K, so I'm not really that impressed with it. Love the artwork. Uh, great, one of my favorite storylines from Nine, and yeah, I. I mean, I'll probably say this about most of these cards. I'm just not sure what to make of these cards of the, you know, you have to pay with two CP a different element. I think you're right. I think it's for limited or draft or something of that nature, like in constructed. I, I just, it's hard to see when you would favor these, especially since, as you pointed out, it's also under curve. So yeah, definitely underwhelming. Okay. Well, the next one is, I guess, a revived archetype that actually has a uh, shot this opus. So why don't you yeah. tell us about uh, our next guy? Is this Gekku or Gekko? I will say Gekku. So, yeah. Gekku, four cost, uh, 8k power, job ninja. That'll be important. When Gekku enters the field, choose one forward opponent controls. Deal it 2,000 damage for each job ninja or card name ninja you control. You can also then pay one fire CP. Gekku gains brave until the end of the turn. Uh, I like the action ability. You know, it obviously would be silly if it required him to dull, but there's no other weird caveats that, like, Oh, it's got to be, uh, you know, while you're attacking or something weird. So it's nice, just cheap fire and boom, you got a brave forward. That's always nice and it's optional. And then his main effect that it's it's job ninja or card name ninja, as we'll see, especially when we get to wind, all the new ninjas that have been added. So that's counting your backup line too. So this guy, if you're playing a ninja deck, he could come down for an un unreasonable amount of damage and you're probably just deleting whatever you're, you're hitting with it. So... Yeah, I don't know enough about ninjas to like say where he fits in the overall scheme, but I mean, as far as what his text reads, if you're playing a ninja deck, it seems like he's near guaranteed to delete something on entry. I think he's going to be 1k better than the black mage we just spoiled, so I think on average he'll come in for 6k, so that's himself into uh, ninja backups, and you're hopeful that you get that 8k um the issue is people can remove a ninja on the stack to yeah. lower his power uh or the damage that he's doing so you're not always going to get the 8k it's almost it, it's kind of like uh one cp vv where you need to do you have to get one extra character just in case or uh in this case you want to aim to do 10k if you want to actually do 8k just in case your opponent wants to uh interact on the stack because it's it's a lot of CP to invest and not get the kill. Or another fine option is to just combo this and um, 
when we get to wind, you're going to learn all about shuriken uh, counters and what edge can do with them, uh, in which case you're not as worried about how much damage this guy's doing when he comes in. So I think that if ninjas are good, this guy will be good. I, I'm not sure if ninjas will be good or not. Yeah, we'll have to see on that. Uh, one thing I will say for archetypes in general, and I'm glad this guy has it, and we saw it with Cyan, they need to make all archetype cards say both job name and card name. That was one of my biggest complaints about the fat chocobo from Opus 9, was that yeah. it didn't cover job name chocobo. So there was things you could whiff on when it pulled. So I'm glad that it covers both card name and job name. That is very important. And they're doing that with the monks, too. It seems like they've kind of turned a page on that, which is good. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the next up is uh, next up is Zach, uh, which is a one CP eight K forward. Whoa, job soldier, which is always relevant. At the end of each of your turns, choose one forward. Uh, your opponent controls. Discard one card from your hand. If you do so, deal at five K damage. Uh, obviously, this is a really good value for an eight K. Um, and if you read the FAQ, you'll note that if your opponent does not control any forwards, you don't have to do the discard. So you only have to discard if they have forwards. Uh, this basically becomes um, a, a, like a every turn pinger that you need to follow up with something. And if you don't, uh, you're going to end up pitching your whole hand, which is not great. But I think that Fire's got a lot of stuff going on that they can combo with this uh, to make sure that he is uh, viable. But it's, it's going to be tough because you if you play him... You can play them right away. You can play them off the first backup you play, and then you have this one CPAK. But you're not prepared to follow up with all of, all of your ping and all your other stuff that you have. If you play this with a bunch of backups out, then you're going to hopefully be able to utilize that 5k ping as much as possible. Even if you have something like Mana Swim, uh, the War Mech, to increase that ping to, to 7k every time, like that could be a really neat little combo. Um, but uh, I'm pretty unsure. This, th this also has... Uh, a fierce competitor in the Opus 10 Zach, so that's where I'm not sure this one will even see play because of that card. Yeah, I would think of this more in like a Zondi deck, like a, he could he'd be a good target for the Zondi from last set. Um, this is the very first instance, because it's the first seven card we've seen of all the seven cards in the set, just feel like they're just tuned up a little bit more than any of the other categories. And what I mean by that is that uh, look at Najee from Opus 10. He was a 1 CP 7K, and what, but he had a crippling downside. He cannot attack. I'm really amazed that this card isn't just to keep Zach on the field, you discard one every turn. Like, to, okay, well, he's so cheap, so that's the... But the fact that the discard also gives you a burn, like... Again, that, that's not the typical effect of, okay, here's this... He's under cur or he's over curved, so here's this downside to balance them out. Or they're under curved, so here's this upside to balance them out. So the fact that at least at least the discard doesn't go to waste. Like maybe I'm just too focused on that, but like at least the discard does do something. It's not just okay, you know, here's the penalty for keeping him on. It's like, oh yeah, maybe you can kill something on the way out too. So yeah, I, I don't know if he'll necessarily be used in a seven deck, but I think yeah. he could be used yeah. with Zondi or some other cheap versions of fire where you're pinging a lot. I think I think he's going to be used in yeah not a seven deck like we'll find a different a different home for him for sure. Okay, uh, we've got another uh, cheap fire forward. This is Zadon from Final Fantasy IX, two uh, CP, two K fire forward job thief. Uh, Zadon reads he has haste, and then when Zadon deals damage to your opponent, choose one forward opponent controls, deal at eight thousand damage. I love this artwork. This is a really good Amano artwork. I love that Garnet's on there, too. Um, you have to combine this with something, whether it's Zemus to make him unblockable or Ice so that you have dull care. Because, I mean, there's no way you're ever just going to, like, let him go in and your opponent's going to be like, oh, okay, sure. You know, and, and because he's so easy to block, I mean, shoot, they could block it with their Quorum if they wanted to. Just be like, sure, I'll just trade. Like, mm -hmm. so... To get the value off of this guy, you're going to want to combine him with some way to force himself in so that he can do the damage, because otherwise, what's the point? Um, yeah, and you have stuff like uh, in Fire, you have Red Mage and Yotsuyu as well, so there are ways to uh, get this off in Mono Fire, but I think you're likely going to find yourself in Fire Wind or Fire Ice, because those have um, other unblockable methods, uh, things that you can do to make sure that Zidane is getting through. And if he is, you're going to be getting a whole lot of value. So it's a really neat card. Um, it, it's just like, it's so random that, you know, this one's a thief and yeah. 
the other ones are genomes or like like it's so arbitrary but thief is certainly going to be like an important job at some point you'd imagine right. but genome might not be it's, it's really also random. I mean, I guess to each their own, but like if I'm playing two costs of Don, I'm playing the Water Legend. Like, come yeah. on. Not only does he have a built in way to get past you, his reward is just so great if he does. So, yeah, I definitely prefer that one to this one, but who knows? Maybe this will pop up in some random spots. Yeah, I mean, if, if your opponent just attacked with their early forward, it's an 8k or something, and That's true. it's dull, and you, they pass turn to you, you play Zidane and swing back, you get your damage and kill their guy. If they that's spend, a good point. If they spend removal on him, then that's bad too. Like they've probably overpaid for it. So compared to your two CP you spend on yeah. so we'll see. Alex brought up that. a great point. He he is good as a counter swing. I hadn't considered that. That if they mm -hmm. have they just swung out, and you can drop them and whoop and send them in that way. Yeah. Okay, so next up is our first legend, which is Shadow. Uh, so Shadow is a five CP. Uh, forward job assassin uh, 7k power when shadow enters the field reveal the top five cards of your deck add one backup among them to your hand and return the others uh, other cards to the bottom of your deck in any order then you may pl uh, play one backup of cost two or less uh, from your hand onto the field he also has a special called shadow fang which is one card named shadow and a fire uh, there's no dull symbol which is very important choose one forward deal it 10,000 damage you can only use this ability when you have received a point of damage this turn which is quite easy now with Dadaluma and Sabin and all these other cards that are making you take a point of damage uh, so this card is awesome it um, basically becomes one CP if you hit on the on the uh, top five cards you want to find in interceptor probably if possible but it doesn't specify the element of the backup so you can play any sort of ice backup that you do have in uh, in um, ice fire ff6 so this card is just really it's just really nice like it's going to cost you one cp to play you're going to be if you play a backup you are let's say you're, you already have interceptor then you've just set up your next backup for the next turn uh which is really big in final fantasy trading card game people are constantly looking for things like norse Shalin uh, or like pain to search your yuna and your riku because Finding and playing backups reliably early is the key to winning because then you're just much more efficient than your opponent. The Shadow Fang can also be used when your opponent, on your opponent's turn, they swing, you take a point of damage, and you just have a 3 CP deals 10k, which is important. You can kill things like uh, the other legend that, for fire in the set. So, seems good. It's so weird that this is a fire card. I mean, maybe we've come into a new age where fire cards are just like solid now. I'm so used to them having like a goofy restriction on him. Like the turn you play Shadow, you must also then break him immediately. <laughs> like something nonsense. No, everything about him reads great. And because of the way he's worded, there's no restriction on the backup you can grab. It, it's just as long as it's a backup, you can pull it. And then you don't even have to play that same backup. As long mm -hmm. as you have a TCP backup in hand, you can draw, so you can whiff on the effect, and if you have a two CP backup in hand, you still get to play that down. Like the wording on that just makes him so good. Because again, there would have been more caveats and more chance had it been like you would then have to play that backup if it's two or less. Which is, I guess, maybe what I was expecting. It's like, no, nah, man, just grab a backup, and if you have a two in hand, so ideally, if you know you got a two in hand, it's the perfect time to play this. Because again, it doesn't matter what you hit, you can play that for free. Interceptor feels great off that. Speaking of that. This is what I'm more used to, the art for Interceptor. He looks much more menacing here. Yes. Um, yeah. And I wasn't originally sold on Shadow Fang just because of the fact you can only use it when you take damage, but I forgot about Dataluma and Salmon and that, again, you would you can put him in a deck where you want to take damage, and then or like you said, just let him through, and you're threatening, hey, do I have Shadow Fang in hand? So, yeah, he's very good. He's very befitting a legend and great artwork, and yeah, great card. Oh, I actually, I can see there's like a little fine fine print at the very bottom, and it says, Shadow can only be paid for by discarding dark cards. Oh, there you go. Oh, there, now okay, now it's a fire legend. Okay. There you go. It's, now it's yeah. your traditional fire legend. That makes sense. All right. Yeah, card's garbage. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of garbage, how about the next one? All right. We have two CP backup warrior job standard unit. Uh, tap, put warrior into the break zone, choose a forward against a thousand power until the end of the turn, or you can tap, pay a fire and a colorless, put warrior into the break zone, choose a forward and deal it 5,000 damage. 
Maybe. I don't and hate I just, it. I don't actually. Hate I mean, it. it's not that. Yeah. yeah, again, like I could this. This feels like it has a place in limited or sealed. Uh, it could be a nice little trick of like, oh, bump that guy by one, or you know, hit nuke that thing for five. But beyond that, I, I just can't see why I'd ever put this in construct. And again, it's one of those weird cards that like, it's not that anything it says is bad, but in a game where you're limited to fifty or solid fifty card space, like it's just hard to see what there's. There are just better cards you could run over this. The the one thing it has going for it is that fire has bad backups so yeah. it's multi-unit too so you can play multiple yeah exactly um the opus one black mage which is uh, one fire and a, and a tap and discard or sorry and break does 4k and that actually did see a decent amount of play and uh could actually be pretty good with uh with zach that we were talking about so i mean i can see this seeing play as well but it's probably not going to make the cut even with a weak backup pool that fire has yeah okay moving on we have dataluma that we had previously referenced so this is also going straight into your final fantasy 6 decks because dataluma is a 2 cp ak forward martial artist is his job when dataluma enters the field dataluma deals you one point of damage so there's your 2 cp you don't have to pay it's a point of damage instead you can hit an EX burst on this damage, which is pretty nice. Uh, so d at damage three, Dataluma gains Brave and Dataluma cannot become dull by your opponent's summons or abilities. So he becomes basically Opus One Guy. Uh, if you play this early on, you are already at damage one. So there's only two more points to take and he's online. Uh, this is just a really high powered card. And I think that unless Fire Ice finds that they are killing themselves too quickly. I think it's only going to be a good thing. Yeah, I originally wasn't sold on this card very much because I'm just kind of anti-damage as a mechanic. And not that it's not successful because I've, I've been wrecked by it plenty of times. It's just not my play style. So generally, I avoid it personally. Um, but, uh, you know, for the cost and everything, I've definitely come around onto it and seen some of the other combos now that you can do, like Shadow, Shadow Fang. You know, you can literally drop this and then immediately Shadow Fang afterwards. Uh, Sabin, we'll see. Sabin coming up, we'll see. Um, other than that, I'll just comment on the artwork that it's so weird, especially looking at it now. Like, I always thought it was weird, but, like, the flower that he's holding almost looks like it was Photoshopped in. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like it should be part of... And the little necklace he's wearing, too. Like, the coloring on those two stand out so much against him that it just looks so strange. And Dataluma... <laughs> it's funny that such a small character in Six has, like, between his open, you know, his Earth card has, like, caused so much havoc in this game. Yeah. And he also looks very peaceful and serene here, which, again... Doesn't really fit with him the game, but eh. yeah. And now, is this a full art card? Do we know if it is or not? I don't know. I feel like it should. You'd think that's something they would want to show off, but I just don't know. Uh, yeah, because I think he's wearing a speedo, so I mean that's going to be a pretty, <laughs> pretty risque card if you, right. if you know what I mean. Uh, okay, moving on. This is Moody. Uh, Moody is a three CP backup job idolin from Final Fantasy Legend. When Moody enters the field, you may search for one fire summon and add it to your hand. When you cast a card named Bahamut, activate Moody. So, I already know there's going to be some people out there trying to do like a Bahamut-based deck with this card to get value off of it. You could run this with like uh, the 4CP Mutsuki, so that way when the Bahamut kills something, you also activate her. So you're basically just getting all the CP value. Other than that, I mean, she's, I guess really, I don't know, like... In the fire summon deck, see if you're not running Bahamut, I don't know if you'd want to run this. I feel like you'd rather run Zaz because even though he's one CP more, he's an EX burst, so he's going to get you that advantage. So, I unless you're running the bah a Bahamut train, I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe you just want the fire summon, but again, I feel like you'd rather have the EX burst on Zaz than if if you're just looking for the fire summon pull. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that it's at three CP. That's kind of nice too. Um, that's easier to play a lot of the time. The Bahamut thing is pretty tough because all of our Bahamuts are 4 CP or higher, so yeah. it makes it more difficult to do. We need a cheaper Bahamut to work with this, but um, I just love the space that it creates for future Bahamuts, and mm -hmm. this is clearly a baby Bahamut, which is pretty neat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it would be even cool if we like got a summon of him, version of him at some point too. I, I would enjoy that. Absolutely. Cards, I do like the artwork. It's cute. Yeah, all this new FFL artwork is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, continuing on the FFL train, we have Moro. Um, <laughs> he's an interesting, uh, interesting card. He yeah. is a two CP fire forward uh, job adventurer in training. Uh, at damage three, he gains two thousand power and haste, which makes him seven uh, K haste, which is um, nothing special yet. At damage six, he becomes. Uh, he also gets two thousand power, and when the forward targeted or damaged by Moro is put from the field into the break zone on the same turn. Activate Moro, he can attack one more time. So by the time you get to damage six, he's going to be a 9k haste. Uh, if you kill somebody, he gets to attack again. Unfortunately, damage six is not reliable, and the there's lots of examples of that, including the Opus 2 legend Gabranth, which at damage six becomes incredible, but you just never reliably can get him out at that time. So I don't think that this is going to be see much more play outside of limited. You know, this would have been interesting if he had the your opponent is at damage six because then if you think about it, so if they're damage six, they have to block, which means you're basically guaranteed to get his effect mm-hmm. off. But you know, if you drop this at your damage six, what if they've taken only one or two damage? Like they're not going to sack something to this to let you get that effect. They'll just let it go through. Um, so I don't know when, when this first came out, I was actually kind of hype on it. Cause I was like, Oh, wow, we can attack twice. That's cool. And you know, for nine K, but like you said, I just, I just don't know how reliable that's going to be. So no. yeah, I've kind of soured on them a bit now that I look them over. Uh, the next card, we're going to continue, uh, on the FFL train. The next card is pretty neat. I like the art a lot. And, um, yeah. What do you think? This is Parai seven CP nine K forward. FFL legend, Job Warrior. He is an EX burst. The cost required to play Parai onto the field is reduced by one for each point of damage you have received. And then the EX burst portion, when Parai enters the field, choose one forward opponent controls. Deal it a thousand damage for each point of damage you have received. I'll be honest, this card bores me. (laughs) The, The problem is when I look at this, all I see is Opus 8 Legend Cloud which to me is just a completely superior version of this. It's 2 CP less. Uh, It also has an EX burst. It's the same body. It has the return effect. And Cloud, this can only max out at 6,000 damage, and that's if you're on 6 points of damage, whereas Cloud can max out at 9. So Cloud is always, always going to do more damage than this. The only advantage that this one has is that it does get cheaper for every point you you get. So if you're on six damage, you can play it for one CP, which is undeniably great value, but I don't know. I just, if I'm looking for a big fire body that does an on entry burn and is a burst, I just don't see why you would ever run this over cloud unless you really, really want that CP value, which again, you have to at least be on three then for him to then be cheaper than cloud. So you've got a little window in there from three to six CP or three to six damage that, Maybe this is a better choice than Cloud, but he'll always do less damage than Cloud, too. So, I mean, yeah, I, I hate to just compare, completely spend his little review comparing him to another, but that's just all I saw. I was like, oh, it's like Cloud, but what if he's not good? I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do you like him better than that? I like, you know what I like him for is the discount, um, because at four or three damage, he becomes a four CP 9K, which is nice. That's the part that I like. Um, I think he's really cool as a common slot in limited. But otherwise, you're right. He's not going to see that much play. Uh, at six damage, he's a one CP. But we already talked about how unreliable that is with yeah. Moro, and also with Gabranth, who at six damage was a one CP that can give all your forwards brave, which is amazing. But too late. So the the problem with him is that it's just the amount of times you're going to see him, and he's not going to be live yet, and you'll have to discard him for CP. Then it's just not, that's not going to help. I appreciate you bringing up um, sealed and limited and draft because I generally tend to only look at these from a constructed standpoint because, you know, it's the main uh, format we use. But yeah. you're right. Th- this could be useful in a limited or a, a standard, or, you know, sealed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so we're moving on to the next legend. I get both the legends. Wow. We'll have to give them to you next time. We got to uh-huh. we gotta put in... Uh, Alex always has music going on this, but we're going to have to put in uh, Jack's theme from 10 with the... Like, I always hear that little guitar riff anytime I see this. I'll I'll add it in for the first, like, two seconds. Yeah! So this is uh, 
um, seven CP Braska's final Aeon. He is job final Aeon. Uh, he is a 10k power forward. Um, when Braska's final Aeon attacks or is chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities, choose up to one forward in your opponent controls. Deal at 10,000 damage. This cannot be reduced. So this is the same as we were just talking about with Ku Chaspel. So this will get through all your opponent's shenanigans. Uh, discard Braska's final Aeon. Choose one forward. Deal at 10,000 damage. You can only use this ability if you control two or more job summoner forwards. Uh, and if Braska's final Aeon is in your hand. So if you are playing a summoner's deck, then this becomes a 2k burn or, or 2 CP uh, burn spell, which is pretty neat. Um, and if it gets onto the field and survives long enough, it's going to annihilate your opponent. I think this is a very, very, very cool um, legend design. I think it's just so powerful that that's what you want out of a legend. And it's no, it's not amazingly easy to set up, but it's it's just like it's it has so much potential. If you get a goblin down the turn before this, you can haste it when it comes in. If your opponent isn't ready to answer it right away, then they're in trouble. You know, the competitive scene of this game always talks about speed. You know, oh, this card's too slow, this card's too slow. This is great design. This card right here is reason why not everything has to have an entry effect. It just needs to have some sort of value. And because of the way this card is worded, you know, he's going to get value when you take mm -hmm. it. Even if they immediately, yep. you know, he's at least blowing something up on the way. I mean, granted, the only thing that really gets around this is like Famfrit, um, which of course everything's got an answer. But yeah, if they've got a forward on the field, they can Diabolos it right away. You're at least killing their forward on the way out. Um, so yeah, and of course the longer he's on the field, like, oh, good God. Uh, the artwork is amazing. Hook's great. Honestly, his second effect, his action ability, it could not even be on the card and he'd still be like, I don't even know how much yeah. that's going to be relevant, but who cares because it's just the neat. first part. Yeah, th this is, this is it feels good to invest 7 CP in this, um, the 10K bot. Like, yeah, he's just, I'm very excited to try this. He's definitely going on in uh, at least a one of in mono fire, so... So if, if he does 10k to something on the way out, you've still lost. Like, you've lost yeah, sure. CP. But it's way better than than all the other 5 plus Ks, or 5 cost forwards that we play that get nothing on the way out. So yeah. that, is pretty, that is pretty neat. Now, if you ever play this onto your board alone against a water player, then get out of here. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? I mean, yeah, just scoop. <laughs> Well, I mean, you have to watch out because, I mean, Veritas will, will come hunting because this is a card that if you played it yeah. really quickly, it could snowball and win you the game. But, like, you just never know. That's kind of the risk of it. Yeah. No, he's great. Love him. Okay, the next card is even more powerful than Braska's Final Land. Why don't you tell us Whoa. about it? All right, this is a bomb, one CP monster. Awesome from Final Fantasy X, oddly enough. Uh, Multi-unit, of course. You can play as many as you, uh, you can play up to three. When a fire character other than bomb enters your field, place one monster counter on bomb. Put bomb into the break zone, choose a four, deal 4,000 damage, or uh, put him into the break zone and deal it 10,000 damage, and you can only do that if you have three or more monster counters uh, placed on the bomb. I believe there is... A a monster in every element that has a mechanic like this, where like you can break it at any time for an effect, but if you get the counters on it, then you can break it later. And to be honest, I wish I could be more specific, but I just don't know about these cards. I'm just going to have to see them to truly know how, because ideally you turn one, put down a single backup, turn two, tap, and boom, the bomb comes out. So you're immediately stacking. But that might not happen. What if you don't see this thing till later in the game? You've already got a bunch of fire characters out. Like, Maybe it won't be that useful then because maybe, you know, you're just not going to get that buildup that you... Because ideally, again, you want these down early so your backups start uh, creating the monster counters. Um, and then, you know, they cap out at three. So what if you get five guys down? But it doesn't matter because you're never going to get that 10k burn. So at minimum, at, at minimum, he's a 1k monster. So you got a character on the field. If you've got some card that affects that, that does 4,000 damage. So that's not bad. That's the nice thing is that even if you don't get his great effect, like he still will get you something. But I just don't know how good these cards are going to be without actually seeing them. I agree with that. I think that we need to play with them to see how how often you can reliably get three counters onto them and it be meaningful. And as that's something that we've never had to do before, it's really hard to evaluate. 
My guess is that it's going to be too hard for the payoff for this guy. Uh, that's a lot of CP invested to get to the third counter, and then your opponent has a lot of time to interact with it as well. I think mm -hmm. monster removal is going to come back. I know that I'm going to start running Psycom Wardens in my Earth decks again, or Psy sorry, Psycom Enforcers to start taking out some of these monsters. So um, I'm a little, I, f I would feel uh, at risk to play this card. Agreed. Uh, that being said, because there's no, no, no caveat to the action ability, again, at worst, even if they break it, you can be like, all right, well, break it immediately and do whatever oh, yeah. it does. Yeah, it's going to do something on the way out for sure. If it's broken, you can do 4K, um, and that might be relevant. Maybe they're not going to attack with a Ford that turn anymore because you it will trade or something. So right. don't forget don't forget to pop it, uh, pop it and lock it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this next card is... Pre getting pretty well received because it's pretty nice. It's uh, it's Marsh. He's a 5 CP, uh, 7K Ford category FFTA, which is getting a big boost this set, and he is Job Clan Leader. If you control two or more category FFTA characters, the cost for playing Marsh is reduced uh, by two, so he becomes a 3 CP, 7K, so that's on curve. Uh, this includes backups, so if you get a few backups out and there's standard units and there's all sorts of backups you can put out, in category FFTA. Um, so when he enters the field, you can choose one category FFTA character of cost three or less in your break zone and play it onto the field. And immediately you think about the legend Ritz that we just got, but this also oh, yeah. plays things uh, like the Nono uh, Wind Moogle backup that mm -hmm. activates a character uh, backup every time you swing with a forward. So there's a lot of really good cards you can bring out with this. When you bring something into the field with this card you're netting some cp because uh, especially if he was reduced because you're getting a ton of value like it's just huge so i think that this card is gonna really open up firewind uh ffta and i think that's gonna be a really cool deck to try out 100 uh, percent. this is another one that even if his first text wasn't on there it would be irrelevant you're playing yeah. him so that you can get the free three cp or less um Thank God this doesn't work with the Lua, because that would be annoying. Um, yeah. I believe she's TA2. Yep. And other than that, I just have to comment on his artwork, because, I don't know, just the facial expression he's making just almost seems like, I don't know, like he's in like a dreamlike state, or like someone's like, hey, Marge, what are you doing? He's like, mm, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really, his artwork really amuses me. But yeah, no, he's solid, solid card. Super solid card. Okay, uh, oh, look who we have. Uh... Hey! It is my personal favorite character from Final Fantasy VI. Well, is that is that? I, I think I see him back there. Yeah, there he is. No, for real. Uh, Sabin has always been my personal favorite character from Final Fantasy VI. Even though I wasn't very good at doing all the blitzes when I was a kid, um, still I just thought he was so cool. So let's get to him. Three cost, seven uh, K forward. Seven. Job Monk, of course, for Final Fantasy VI. He has an action ability which requires zero CP. Until the end of the turn, Sabin gains 2,000 power, first strike, and brave. Sabin deals you one point of damage. You can only use this ability during your turn and only once per turn. And then at damage 5, when Sabin attacks, choose one forward opponent controls. Deal at damage equal to Sabin's power. Again, when this first came out, I was like, eh, dealing yourself damage, that's not my style. But looking at it more and more... Again, with Dataluma, with Shadow, if you have decks that want to take damage, uh, you can find ways to make that effect beneficial to you. And even without that, for free, making him a 9k first strike brave, like there's not much that's going to stand up to that. And what's especially scary is if you're on 4 damage and you can go to combat, hit the ability, pop it to 5 damage, boom, you attack, and on the attack, now you've just blown something up on top of it. So uh, he's also... Good, great in Fire Ice 6, and I like the original Legend Saving too. I think he's really cool too. But this one I think will definitely have a place, and I've always liked this artwork as well. So yeah, this, this card has really grown on me, and he's he's cool. He's really cool. Yeah, I think that he's basically, his action ability is, hey, trade damage with your opponent because he's going to get through if he uses it, and that's going to be favorable for you because he has brave uh he'll be up to block the next turn and you'll have other fords as well so i think that that he's going to be uh i think he's going to be super powerful i'm definitely going to be holding my removal so that right when my opponent uses their that ability i'm going to try to bop him right there and then 
Absolutely. Oh, I have to comment too because the uh, the the legend saving from Opus Four too. He also all of his effects were when he attacks, and the, this one is it too when he attacks. It's like they must. There must be something they really like about Sab, and they're like, okay, it has to be when he's attacking though. Everything he does has to. Be it has to be when he's tussling. Yeah, right. He's a fighter. <laughs> Get it? Because he's a monk, so it's where he's punching. Oh, he's he's a martial artist, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah sorry. <laughs> one one thing I want to one thing I want to see see uh, now is actually maybe like Sabin and Dad Luma in a Fire Earth deck. They could go in a monk deck with the new Ursula, but they could also go with a Noctis. And as soon as you use their yeah. abilities, Noctis is gonna hit someone for seven K. So that could be kind of a neat little interaction as well. Oh, uh, now I know a guy at my locals who's totally gonna do that. It's gonna be very annoying. <laughs> Okay, uh, next up we have Merilith, which is one of our uh, Chaos, one of the four uh, generals from Final Fantasy 1. So this is a uh, 5 CP 9K forward job Chaos category 1. When Merilith enters the field, you may pay uh, 2 fire and 1 generic. When you do so, choose one forward. Your opponent controls, deal at 7K damage. So that's pretty, that's pretty steep on top of a 5 drop to do that, so not really sold so far you do get a bit of cp back because when merilith is put uh from the field to the break zone you may search for one job chaos other than cardinal merilith and add it to your hand so that can be one of the ones from the other elements so there's three choices there or it can be the chaos backup that we got printed this set uh so that's kind of neat to to bank you some cp or another forward on exit but overall the strength of these cards is not very high yeah, it's nice to see the four fiends finally. Uh, it's kind of surprising it took them this many sets to get them represented because mm -hmm. uh, they're they're such a, you know they're from the original game. They're such a neat part of the series. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean that's a lot of CP to pay. So that's what a total of eight. You're gonna have to pay eight CP to get your body into a seven K burn. It just doesn't feel very good. And I don't know how relevant the second part's gonna be or not. So yeah, it's cool to see her, but definitely definitely not sold on this one. You know, you could actually play for seven CP. You could play Amarant, who has an EX burst. Yeah, and I think that card K. sucks. And yet, yeah, he's, oh, totally. Like <laughs> from a from a yeah standpoint, is technically I guess a bit superior to this one. So yeah, oh yeah. Uh, okay, next up, we've got a little card. This is Lilty uh, from Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Standard unit. It's a backup. Three CP. When Lilty enters the field, turn over one card at a time from the top of your deck until an ice or wind card is revealed. Add it to your hand. Then shuffle the other cards and return them to the bottom of your deck. Uh, similar to some of the other things we've seen so far in this review, this there's a card like this in most of the elements where you put it down and then it reveals like two other elements. And similar to the monsters, I just don't know. Like, uh, hearing it, it just sounds like that's just too much setup for not much payoff. Because I, f I feel like, ideally, you would want to basically run this in tricolor. Yeah, you could just do ice, because you're guaranteed to hit, you know, if you do ice fire. You could do dual elements, but you could really maximize your value if you did three. But I don't know, maybe that'd be worse, because maybe you'd have less chance of hitting what you want. Um, but I don't know. Maybe these are also really good. Uh, they're multiplayable, so you can put up to three down. I, I just, I just don't know. I'm not really sure what to think about this one. Well, I'll, I'll clear it up a little bit. I mean, they're they're pretty much a searcher, right? Like you're paying three CP for any any searcher at all in this game, and you get a card back. So they're like a pseudo one CP backup, and this is no different. It's going to get you one card back, guaranteed, unless you round out of ice or wind cards in your deck. Yeah. Uh, this is just like the lock backup we got a few sets ago, where if you put one card of that target in your deck, you will for sure get it. Or if you put, let's for example, you're playing Mono Fire, like I do, you're, you have a uh, three Genesis and three Lastwell, then you declare Ice and play Lilty, you are guaranteed to get a Genesis or a Lastwell. <laughs> for sure so you're specifically tutoring them or if you play just three last well you're guaranteed to get a last well for sure when you play this card so it could be used to specifically tutor or it could just be used to uh to color fix in a dual element deck and for that reason these are going to be like they're going to be fine cards i don't think they're going to be broken they're not going to be like i i think that they're just going to be useful i'm definitely going to put one in my my mono fire splash splash ice but would this go into fire ice six no i don't think it would because you already have a searcher and you already have a lot of uh important backups that you need to play but 
we're going to see this type of backup in every single element and they're all going to be the same in that they're just they're different ways to tutor and set up in a certain way if you want your deck to be able to find one card this can become uh, a very specific tutor last well on demand and mono fighter sounds pretty good so well done you convinced me you, you made this you sold me on this one Okay, next up we have Red Cap, and I think this is the final one as well. Uh, so Red Cap is a 3 CP monster uh, category FFTA, which means that Marsh can play him. Uh, he is a 7K, and his job is Goblin, which means he can be searched by uh, Verena from Last Opus. Uh, during your turn, Red Cap also becomes a forward with 7K power, uh, and then you can pay one fire, discard him from your hand, remove one backup from the game, and choose one forward, deal at 7k damage. You can only use this ability if red cap is in your hand. So this is also going to be a theme in the set that we have all these monsters that cost one element. They have to be discarded, so that's 3 CP, and then you have to remove a backup from the game, which you could have spent the CP on. Uh, but then you're losing a, a CP generator for the next turn. So it's kind of expensive. You can think of it like three and a future CP to, to do 7K, which is not very good, but the versatility of it is pretty nice. Uh, these forts dodge a lot of removal. They dodge things like Shantoto. They dodge things like Fiend of Alphor. So that's kind of nice, but I think overall they're pretty weak. This might see some play because of the FFTA synergy, but... Overall, I'm not a huge, and it also it's searchable. I, I, I liked this card when I first saw it, and now I'm not so sold on it. I feel a little similar to you. So Opus 9 had a bunch of the monsters that were fours only on your turn, and with the exception of the Marlboro, which I play personally, I never see any of those. And honestly, I don't even see that one. I just play because I think it's such a fun card. Mm -hmm. um, so that right there already makes it kind of eh. And I don't know, I, I, there have been other cards in the game that like, oh, well, you can discard it instead. I've never seen them used, not once. Um, at least not at my locals. Maybe some other places run them. And like you said, it's not like you can just pitch it. You've got to pay a fire, discard him, so that's one plus the two he'd be worth. That's three CP, and remove a backup. So you're losing whatever that backup's effect is, all for a 7K burn. Like, okay, just play Brent Hilder for that amount, or Ifrit, like... And I know, you know, well, you don't have the chance to get him as a body. So maybe we'll be proved wrong and there will be some kind of place for this, but I just don't see it. Like, it, again, it seems like so many caveats and set up for mm -hmm. an average effect. I, I do like that it's going to add backup removal to every element, um, but then it's kind of expensive to do it. So, yeah. Well, and because fine. it's removed from the game, you can't even put it in a recursion deck because that backup is gone. You know, it's that, it'd be interesting yeah. if it broke the backup. Because then you would see, oh, I'm going to break Grand Pier, I'm going to break this and this and this, or I'll get it back at least. But yeah, because it removes it from the game, it instantly now doesn't synergize with anything that wants to put something in the break zone. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that is it for Fire, and that's our first set review. So Do you want to do uh, the starters? Oh, um, right, I forgot about the starters. We can quickly talk about those for sure. Uh, I'm going to have to just pull them up very quickly. Well, yeah, sure. I've got the next one. I'll start with the next one. So this is a 3CP Barrett EX Burst, 7K forward avalanche operative. And all the starters are basically seven characters. Uh, burst, when Barrett enters the field, choose a forward opponent controls, deal a 1,000 damage for each category seven character you control. If Barrett results from an EX Burst, deal at 2,000 damage for each char uh, category seven character you control instead. So if this hits off a Burst, even off of a minor field, he can do a ton of damage, which is really nice. Um, he has great synergy with the Zack from Last Opus, because when he enters, he's going to trigger Zack twice, so that's 4k, and then plus whatever Barrett is going to pop for. Uh, really, and nothing about this card strikes me as bad, it's, it's just it's a matter of, we not only did we get, other than this Barrett, this set, uh, the Opus 8 Barrett, that's the 5k that gets you 7 cards, is so strong in a 7 deck, so really he's just going to be a matter of uh, space, I think, but all his effects are very good. I say you're on both, to be honest. Like this is a good. Yeah. They're both good EX bursts, and they're both great cards. This is a uh, two CP forward when you have Jesse out, and if you decide to run the two CP Earth Cloud, then maybe you're converting it into other cards. So that's kind of neat too. Um, I honestly really, really like this card. I think it's just it's just fun. Like you have to build around it to make it good, and I think that it's going to be. Um, a nice staple in a lot of fire uh, FF7 based decks. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so earlier in this uh, in this episode, you said that um, a lot of the pushed cards are Final Fantasy VII cards. Now, unfortunately, that's not true for every single Final Fantasy VII card. There's one card that's been treated poorly across all of its iterations, and uh, we're talking about Red Thirteen. And he's not even gonna like this card. He's not even gonna be in the in the playable in the game. So uh, (laughs) that makes sense to me, though. Okay, so Red Thirteen is a four cost eight K fire forward. Uh, His job is warrior, which is actually pretty relevant. Um, And uh, he reads: if you control a category seven forward other than Red Thirteen, he gains a thousand power, haste, and first strike. It's he's still a four drop though, and he's I don't know. That's just not good enough. I don't think it's. It's a lot to pay um, for a very increasingly difficult deck to slot cards into. Yeah, everyone is kind of crapped on this card. I think I'm one of the only people who's positive on it. Now, let me say, though, honestly, the reason I'm so positive is because I don't like any of the other Red 13 cards. So for me, in a 7 deck, it was like, oh, okay, cool, one I can finally use. because, And I have used them to good effect. Like, again, you've got a 9k haste first strike coming at you, and if you're playing a 7 deck, you're going to have another 7 forward out. So... Compared to the other Red 13s, I like him a lot because I think he's the best one. But I can also understand the argument of like, eh, he's still just not that great though. Yeah. Um, so Red, I love you, but yeah, it's, it's a shame that, I don't know, he always seems to be the uh, the black sheep in the family or the, or the red sheep, I guess, in this case. But also I want to make a comment on the artwork. Why, why does he look so weird? in this? Like all the other seven cards are clearly screenshots from the game, but That's this, he looks... That's like a uh, high res PS1 artwork. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really it's just odd that he's like the single one that looks this way and everyone else like I had the, I had the same thought when they showed him. I was like, "Why did they choose to go PS1 with him?" And everybody yeah. else <laughs> like it just it's so weird, but you know, what can you do? Yeah. That is it then for Fire. Uh so <laughs> overall, Fire got a couple of good legends. Uh I would argue that every single fire hero card is also very playable. I think mm-hmm. overall, this is one of the better sets that fire has gotten. Yeah. Fire has been getting, obviously they've heard the complaints that, you know, fire wasn't very good. and It feels like it's definitely getting some steps up. I don't think it's going to be as, I don't think the cards in here are as strong as Opus 10's fire cards were because they were just such a nice boost. Um, but yeah, it, it's very interesting and I'm, I'm very curious to see how some of these are going to play out and definitely excited about like the Cyan, the Shadow, the Interceptor, the, the final Aeon. And, and the Kuka you know, Castle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, uh, yep. We'll see how that experiment works out. Exactly. Okay, well that's going to be it for us for this um, Opus 11 review uh for fire and we're going to be back with ice pretty quickly here the plan is to just pound these set reviews out and uh serve them up hot to you guys as soon as humanly possible so uh (laughs) we'll see you soon i'm uh i'm alex scott travis pfeiffer hey don't burn your fingers it's hot (laughs) (laughs) and uh we'll see you next time Thank you so much for watching. You can like and subscribe to support us further, and you can read the Mesidia Post articles at themesidiapost.com. You can also check out our Patreon uh, if you want to support us more. And if you need FFTCG singles, then look no further than Cards of Evil They've got great deals and prices. Check them out. Finally, I'd like to thank FF Decks for creating the best website for creating your Final Fantasy trading card game decks. They've also got a Patreon, so make sure you go check them out. They work so hard for the community, so let's pay them back. See you next time.